Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I'm presuming it's morning for everybody. We might have some uh, international listeners with us today, which can quite often happen. Um, so first of all, uh, it'd be good just to make sure that you can uh, see us and hear us. If you want to pop something into the chat box um, at the bottom, it's always nice to know that it's working and we're not just talking to ourselves on these things. Um, just put something there, say hello, where are you, where, where are you tuning in from uh, today? So I think that's starting to work. So hi, Carissa. So we've got one person on today, so that's good. So uh, it's going to be a productive one. Uh, yeah, we've got a few now. Oh, hi, Sharon. Hi, Ellen. Brilliant. We've got plenty coming through, which is uh, which is good news. So thanks for jumping on today. Just a bit of a housekeeping before we really dive into things. Um, we've got a great webinar lined up today. Um, a lot of people have found uh, the chat box already, which is great. So feel free as we're going through the webinar today um, to uh, put any questions uh, that you've got in there. And we are going to have a Q&A uh, session at the end um, as well. So feel free to put it in as you're going along so you don't forget. Um, and we'll make sure to pick up any questions as we're going along. Uh, we're not expecting any technical issues today. So if you do have a problem with the sight of the sound, feel free to pop it in the chat box if it's everybody. But um, usually what sometimes works is if you just close down Zoom, open up everything on the link again, that should solve any issues. But fingers crossed, nobody's going to have any issues. Um, and it might be if you've got kids in the next room watching Netflix, just get them to do something else for a bit. That's usually the biggest culprit, to be honest. Let, let, let's be honest about it um, within there. Uh, just to confirm that the webinar today is uh, recorded. So if for any reason you need to jump off, go and do something else. Um, or if you've got any colleagues or anybody else you think, actually, this is going to be really worthwhile them uh, giving a listen to. Uh, um, we are going to be sending a recording round after with some of the useful information, so uh, you will get that. Uh, so don't worry if you miss any bits um, uh, as we're going through today. And just to confirm, everything uh, on the webinar today is CPD accredited as well. So we'll confirm that later. But basically, yeah, as you go through and doing your CPD registers, you can add this as part of that. So it's a nice little tick box to keep everybody out of trouble. Um, so starting uh, through today, um, and we've had many more hellos. So thank you very much for that. Uh, everybody coming through and it's sunny in Edinburgh apparently wow I, I I've got a friend there and he rarely says it is so uh, that's a that's a good one for you guys it's better than here in Liverpool where I am today um, on the uh, panel today you've got myself uh, my, my name's David obviously uh, I'm the CEO of XU magazine the zero user magazine uh, and we've been going for 30 issues now which is uh, which is amazing and you look back and you can't quite believe it sometime uh, I'm uh, I'm joined today by a panelist who I'm going to do it going to introduce but I'll also let them do a much better job of introducing themselves uh, later on as well and a much better job uh, than I can do so I've actually been given some interesting facts about them sadly there's not any curveballs in there I was hoping we'd have something in there but it's not nothing embarrassing or anything like that um, so first of all I'm going to start with uh, Sonia uh, so Sonia's uh, had about 20 years experience working in fast growing businesses she's a CEO of Chaser um, and if you don't know, uh, Chaser have got a track history of handing out booze at events. So if you're at Accountex uh, in the coming weeks, make sure you get over to the Chaser stand. We'll see what they've got. Uh, hopefully they won't disappoint. Uh, and uh, prior to this, Sonia led the growth of numerous fintechs in both Canada and the UK. So she's got some overseas experience as well. And um, that specialised in digitisation and automation of finance and accounting tasks and functions. So I think it's safe to say that Sonia's got a good bit of uh, track record in what she's doing. Uh, next up, we've got Sanjay, who is Head of Sales at Expend. Uh, Sanjay has the pleasure of supporting a wide range of businesses in a variety of sectors, including accountants, SMEs, and large uh, multinational organizations. Um, he's got a proven track record of working with businesses and understanding their pain points and identifying solutions. Um, and we've got a bit of a fun fact about Sanjay, that he was the voiceover for a Mexican food brand in his previous life. So there we go. So if you recognize Sanjay's voice from anywhere, then that might be it. Uh, the uh, tedious connection. Uh, finally, last but my uh, no means least, we've got uh, Jen joining us from uh, Float, who is the CEO. Uh, who and Jennifer was previously the CEO and CFO of Cashmaster, an international manufacturing technology business. Uh, during her time there, she was part of the leadership team driving international expansion into Asia. Um, so from 2011 to 2015, uh, she held a senior finance position at Touch Bionics, um, an Archangel portfolio company during, uh, yeah, during a period of growth 
prior to its acquisition. Uh, and prior to that, she was a finance manager at Optus LP, uh, PLC. Um, so it's safe to say that I think there's plenty of experience kicking about today uh, within our panel. And one of the things that I'm really excited about today is uh, with a webinar is for it to be quite practical and you have some really good takeaways uh, with there as well. And I'm quite keen, uh, I'm quite happy to say that there's some really good practical takeaways from the webinar today. Um, and it's not just all going to be theory based. Um, social media, uh, make sure you connect with us on the various different platforms, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, some of us got Insta and Facebook and so on and so forth, but have a look. Um, let us know what you think uh, to the webinar today, put it on there and share it around uh, as well. So if you have a look, um, I've put some of the handles on there so you can have a look and see us uh, on there. So I'll give everybody a second just to make a note of those. Uh, we will also be putting some uh, bits out on social after as well, so you can re like, uh, you can reshare and like those uh, as well. Uh, so some of the things that we'll cover uh, today, and these are just some very sort of headline topics, is the effect of cash flows uh, within a company. As we know, cash is king, um, and without cash, a business isn't going to very uh, last for very long. Uh, how to improve cash flow uh, in your business. Um, and each panelist is going to give us their five best tips and tricks. So like I said, we're going to have some really good takeaways from this today that you can use yourself, but also with your clients um, as part of your advisory services to making sure that you're adding real value to money for them and, and making sure that you're going to have a client base is that going to be around for a long time because there's no good being an accountant to no clients is there or a bookkeeper. Um, and finally, we'll have a Q&A uh, session as well. So. Uh, so the effects on uh, cash flow issues on a company, um, and we've got some really interesting stats here, actually, uh, which have been provided. And I think the third point down here that we'll see is poor cash flow is responsible for 90% of SME failures and 50,000 businesses in the UK closed down each year due to cash flow problems. And I think that's just a staggering fact, isn't it? And I think as well as cash flow problems, uh, one, one of the conversations that I have with lots of businesses and uh, advisors as we're putting things together um, in the magazine, and, and I'm an accountant myself as well, um, so chatting to lots of people is that actually cash flow uh, can be the biggest thing that catches people out. And it's not just the day that for, you wake up the next day and there's no cash in the bank. It's the unexpected bills, isn't it? It's the things that you've not forecasted for. Um, and where people are just running uh, their business from the bank account and not looking forward to those things that they need to take into account. And I think that's why I'm really excited to sit today uh, in terms of the mix of what we've got uh, in terms of our panellists and, for example, what Jen's going to bring to the, to, the, to the foreground as well in terms of looking forward a little bit more um, within there. And as we know, cash flow problems happen when a business uh, does not have enough liquid uh, cash to, to cover their liabilities, basically. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Uh, we're going to be looking at the numerous places in terms of where cash flow can become a bottleneck, how it can be uh, become a problem for businesses and how we can try and alleviate that. And that's why we wanted to expand it, this out across uh, the panelists today. So across Sanjay, Sonia and Jen in terms of the different breadths of experience, because they're going to try and tackle each issue in terms of what can actually cause those cash flow problems and that tightening um, in terms of the cash flow. So first of all, I'm going to hand over to uh, Sonia, who's going to do uh, a fantastic and much better job of introducing herself, like I said, um, and then run through in terms of uh, the, the tips and the tricks and some of the topics that she wants to cover for you. Um, over to you, Sonia. Thank you very much, David. I'm just going to take over screen share. Yeah. There we are. We'll just have a quick oversight. And right now yeah, you're, all, seeing, all good. you're seeing the right screen? Yeah, no embarrassing messages or anything, so you, you're good to go. Excellent. Yeah, I work on three screens, can you imagine? Um, okay, well, thank you so much for, for giving me the um, time to talk today. Um, cash flow is something that's really important to us at Chaser. Um, so I'm, I'm, and and to me personally as um, a, a manager of a business. Um, so um, just to to give you a bit of background on myself to add to what David's already said is yes, we do give out booths at trade shows. So we do hope that you will be able to come and meet us. We will be at Accountex. Um, I, um, I have been working for just over 20 years in the software and uh, tech industry, with about 15 of which have been in fintech. Um, so over the course of the last 15 years, um, I was uh, predominantly focused on marketing, product marketing and market research, where I worked really closely with accountants and finance teams um, to try to really understand 
understand them and understand the the, the woes of their departments um, why tech adoption um, has historically been low in particular in these departments um, finance teams historically have not been the early adopters of tech um, in, in the days of ERPs and accounting software. Um, so over the years, I've learned that um, in terms of um, adoption of software and technology and the automation of manual tasks um, is really about the ease of use and implicit um, easiness of being able to adopt the product and making the products look and feel like traditional tools, um, stuff that, that accountants and finance teams have been predominantly using um, in, in their lives. Um, so I have a, a tremendous amounts of empathy uh, for the challenges that finance teams experience. Um, and, and I hope that my section of the panel today will be helpful to you. Um, currently, as you know, I'm serving as the CEO of Chaser. It's a receivables automation platform. Um, so today I'll be covering some tips and tools on um, how credit control, uh, from a credit control perspective. So just a little bit of background here. Um, as David mentioned, there are several reasons why um, a company can experience poor cash flow. And one of these reasons is not, um, it's not getting enough money. Um, so a lot of businesses, when they're experiencing poor cash flow, they're like, we've got to increase sales, we've got to increase revenue. And the focus is um, on finding that unicorn, finding the silver bullets, um, or, or opening the floodgates. Uh, will be expressions that you'll hear. But a lot of things that um, a lot of the time, many companies don't consider that their lack of cash flow is actually resulting from late, pay, late paying customers. Um, so in a dream world, obviously all invoices would get paid and they would get paid on time um, and preferably even uh, before the due date. Um, but um, unfortunately, as uh, most of you who are attending today probably already know is that that's just not the case. Um, zero, they have found that uh, going into COVID-19, UK businesses have uh, collectively owed around one, 131 billion pounds in outstanding payments. And another study found that nearly 48% of all invoices issued by small businesses are paid late. Since the pandemic started, there's been 209% increase in the number of late payments, and thousands of businesses are in danger because of this. Um, so getting paid on time has never been more important. And this is why today I'm going to give you my five tips and Chaser's five tips um, on how you can optimize uh, credit control and late payments to help with your cash flow. So the first tip uh, just going into is um, first and foremost, have a, a, an effective credit control policy in place. Um, so your company's credit control policy is a set of regulations that govern how you trade on credit terms and an effective credit control policy acts as a guide for your staff. So um, having a credit control policy in place means that the way that um, you would say you action your accounts receivables, um, it becomes far more cohesive and can be more easily coordinated across your business. So it should be based on a combination of past experiences of your, your business and best practice. So that it's relevant to your unique business model and your unique business uh, needs and requirements. <laughs> so in truth, credit policy is you can't just, you know, download it um, mm -hmm. on the website. You do need to personalize um, as it will um, considerably um, vary from business to business, um, ranging from just a few, few paragraphs to even hundreds of pages um, that are aimed at either control departments or even the entire business as a whole, um, sales teams as well, um, that often get involved in, in credit. So a credit policy, it'll ensure a consistent approach to credit management and that every customer will be offered the most appropriate um, um, process and the most appropriate uh, credit management. Um, so the end result will essentially be um, uh, creating a system that encourages customers to pay faster. Um, so if you don't already have a credit control policy in place and you want to optimize it or you want to create one, um, Chaser does offer a free um, credit control policy that you can download and then personalize uh, for your unique business, um, which we'll send out. Um, I believe my team will send out um, after the webinar. Uh, so you'll be able to access that. Um, with regards to my second tip is don't be shy about requiring credit checks. 
Um, I think that's something that we we don't often do as business. Uh, we're just excited about closing the, that new customer that we don't often spend that extra step to make sure that the customer will have the ability to pay. Um, a business credit check is essentially your first line of defense when it comes to bad creditors. So we all know that excitement of landing a new customer and it usually is great news, but it's only great news if that customer is going to be paying um, his or her bills. So with that in consideration, uh, credit checks are an essential part of doing business and um, it provides that layer of security and transparency to kick that relationship um, uh, kick off that relationship in the best way possible. Uh, so much like a personal credit report, a business um, credit check looks into the financial history of the potential client, and it'll highlight any potential red flags in their credit history and payment behavior. So the credit check will give you um, various uh, information, um, such as the business verification. So that'll confirm um, that the company is genuine. Um, it'll check the registration information. So things like um, uh, business addresses uh, and, and the status. It'll check the credit score. So it's a rating of the financial reliability of the business in recent history. And it'll sum up, you know, the risk of doing business with that um, specific company. Um, it'll also be coupled with the credit limit. Um, so it gives you an objective analysis of the risk and what you can expect. And lastly, the financial performance. Um, so it'll analyze the detailed financials uh, to understand uh, the growth markers and the stability of the business. Um, so really carrying out a business check is a common part of a due diligence process, especially when bringing on a large customer um, and, and um, uh, to assess that risk. And on, but, but it's not only bringing in new customers, so ongoing uh, credit monitoring is also an integral part um, of a continuous risk assessment. Um, so customers that you've onboarded in the past that have been doing well uh, may suddenly uh, become late payers uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, so having access to information to find out what's happening in their credit history and their, their credit report is, um, is quite useful as well. Um, so just kind of the advice here, the, the tip is just be proactive and uh, find out this information so that you're in a better position to take the next necessary action um, to protect your business and your cash flow. Um, and if that means you know, stopping your services or reaching out to your customer and propo proposing, for instance, a payment plan or something along those lines to, to, to keep that communications open, credit reports um, typically can even be purchased on a one-off basis. Um, however, many companies, as, such as us at, at Chaser, will offer subscription services um, that allow you to take a certain number of credit checks um, across the year. Um, the next tip, just uh, hang on the slide, is notify customers when payment deadline is near and follow up periodically. Um, so what does that mean um, to, to notify your, your client? So one of the most important things that you can do to get your invoices paid on time and to protect your cash flow is to send payment reminders. So um, that might seem so obvious, um, but there are so many companies that actually uh, don't take a proactive approach to their receivables and only start chasing invoices af months after um, they've been they've been overdue. Um, so we 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 um, at Chaser recommend to all our customers to be proactive and send payment re payment reminders um, quite quickly. Um, so even before an invoice payment is due, um, you can send your customer an email reminding them of an upcoming payment and an upcoming due date, and, and confirm that they uh, uh, confirm that they've received the invoice, and just ask that you know it, is everything okay to get paid on time. So. Um, you know, we are all humans and uh, things can be forgotten and invoices can be misplaced. So by sending that polite and kind of friendly email um, and including a copy of the invoice right away um, ahead of the due date is sometimes just the best course of action to help um, and, and increase your chances of getting paid on time. Um, and if, if the invoice does in fact go overdue, um, then you should continue to follow up with your customers and uh, let them know that the invoice is past the due date and ask them to confirm when the payment is, um, is going to be made. And you're probably, you know, you're probably sitting here thinking, oh, uh, there's no way that uh, you have time or the resources to send a before due reminder to all your customers and 
follow up uh, manually uh, to keep track of all these overdue invoices and all the actions you've taken in a spreadsheet of how many times you've reached out to that specific customer. And, you know, that that is, you know, extremely time consuming um, and um, essentially the essence as to why a business like Chaser exists. Um, to automate those manual tasks for you and give you all of that information centralized in one location. Um, so um, there are a lot of options out there on how you can do that, but I definitely would recommend um, using uh, a, a tool like, like Chaser. Uh, personalized payment reminders are automatically sent to the customers um, that you want to chase, uh, syncing directly with your accounting system. And these personalized emails will be triggered uh, based on when an invoice is overdue and, and can include a copy of the invoice, which is great um, because oftentimes uh, people will say, I misplaced that invoice. Um, and uh, you, uh, you can also include a, a, a payment link where the customer could actually click on the link, open up a portal, they'll see every invoice that's due. Um, if there's a few pending, et cetera. So um, quite a nice uh, um, addition to, to helping. Um, oh, and then just to take over those notes. And then the tip number four is uh, use a combination of SMS and email payment reminders. So um, if I had to make a guess, and um, I didn't set up a poll on this webinar, but that would have been an interesting one um, to do is how many of you um, use SMS as a means to send out payment reminders? Um, I would reckon that probably less than 10%, um, maybe not even that. Um, so we here at Chaser um, know that most businesses are sending out payment reminders by email, um, sometimes even by post. Um, and then essentially um, go straight to the phone call um, if the customer is ignoring um, those emails or potentially, you know, the emails might be going to spam, whatever. Um, so, however, um, did you know that uh, sending payment reminders by SMS is one of the most effective ways that you can reach out to your customers? Um, and as the average open rate of an SMS is 98%. Um, so people who receive double the number of emails per day than they do SMS messages, so, so due to um, the sheer volume of emails that you get, um, 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 they just, you know, email payment reminders sometimes get overlooked. Um, we've noticed that a combination of email reminders and SMS tend to work quite well because obviously more text is available in, in an email as well if you want to go into details and the attachments, etc. cetera. Um, so the combination of both um, works quite well. Um, and if you take um, that advice and um, want to use SMS as a tool to send payment reminders, in addition to emails, we strongly recommend that you include also the payment link in the SMS. So if you you know, the, the, the person could be essentially, and I've done this myself, I had a, a customer chasing me, a supplier chasing me to, to, to pay them, um, and they sent me a reminder via SMS, um, which was brilliant. I thought, oh, that's, that's brilliant. I clicked right on the link and I paid the invoice right there and there sitting on my couch. Because I thought, oh my goodness, they've been sending me for this for ages and I just keep, you know, getting 300, 400 emails a day and I was very bogged down that week in particular. And there you go, um, the supplier was paid um, in seconds. So by including that link in your message, your customer can always pay the invoice on the go or, um, um, like I said, sitting on the couch um, without having to, you know, open up their laptops. Uh, um, so just keep that in mind when you're, when you're chasing payments. And then lastly, from me, um, just implement accounts receivables KPIs. And I'll talk a little bit just, um, um, what that means. So accounts receivables KPIs, um, our credit controllers at Chaser do this. Um, they use it to track uh, the success of their team's performance and the process, um, the performance of the process we have in place. Um, so by tracking these key performance indicators month over month, such as uh, days sales outstanding, average um, days delinquent, or things like collections effectiveness index. Um, you can identify the areas in which you can improve your process or um, the team performance and make data-driven decisions on how you can um, um, just you know, improve the results. Um, because if you don't measure it, then you can't improve it. Um, so one of the most uh, important uh, accounts, uh, KPI, KPIs, I think, 
um, that you can implement is the day sales outstanding. That's the one that my um, our credit controllers at Chaser use um, quite religiously. Um, DSO is measured. Um, it, it's a measure of how quickly your customers are paying their bills. So it's calculated by dividing your total accounts receivables balance um, by your average day sales revenue. So to lower DSO, um, the lower your DSO, the, the better. So a high DSO will mean that you're not collecting payments um, as quickly as you should be as a business. And um, it, it, it will inevitably impact your cash flow. So tracking that, that DSO is one of the most important and most common metrics by receivables team. Um, the formula for calculating DSO is um, accounts receivables divided by the total credit sales times the number of days. And um, it's also known as accounts receivables days and, and debt through days. And this formula will um, tell you how many days it takes um, on average from the time a sale is made um, to when the cash from that sale is received. So yeah, so in a nutshell, by tracking your DSO, you can identify any potential issues with your accounts receivables process and you know, take corrective action um, before it becomes a bigger problem. Um, um, so one of our, actually, one of our credit control experts at Chaser has written an article called the um, 10 Accounts Receivables KPIs um, that you can be tracking on your team. Um, so we'll, um, I'll, I'll ask, uh, um, just in case it's not done, I'll ask my team if they can um, send around that, that blog link as well, just for your reading. And it has the formulas in there. So I'm not expecting you to remember the formulas as, I, as I'm saying them out. Um, so just a few last bits before I hand over. Um, these were uh, hopefully uh, very helpful um, kind of um, late payment uh, cash flow um, tips on on uh, from Chaser. Uh, you know, um, you know, why should you take Chaser's advice? And um, since since our launch, and um, co company has been around just over seven years, and we've helped businesses chase and collect over ten billion dollars uh, in late payments. And uh, we've built a software and a service that helps our users save uh, 15, 15 hours a week and um, uh, just on accounts receivable in general. So when it comes to best practice, just on the receivables and credit control side and just getting invoices paid, um, I think no one understands that better than, than us at Chaser, um, which is why we have um, on the Zero App Store over 400 reviews um, and a pi perfect five-star rating from our customers. Um, so thank you very much. And um, just a, a, a few um, a shame, shameless plug of where you can find us and, and get more information from us, uh, should you desire to receive that information. So thank you very much for, um, for listening in. I'm gonna try to stop my share. Have I stopped screen sharing? No, there we go. Thanks, Sonia. I'm going to now attempt to screen share and will hopefully be as seamless as it was for you. Um, let's see. Is the, is the three screens that I've got? <laughs> <laughs> I've got two and I'm still struggling. Hopefully everybody can see that okay. <laughs> um, I'm sure somebody will let me know um, if they can't. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for um, having me today. Um, I'm going to run through Float's um, five tips and tricks. So first, um, thank you so much for the intro earlier. I won't add too much more to that, but yeah, like, um, like David said, I'm Jen, I'm the CEO at Float. So a bit of background on me, I qualified as a CA over 15 years ago or so. I trained at a medium-sized um, accountancy firm up here in Scotland and worked with lots of small and medium-sized businesses. After I qualified, I moved out of practice and into industry, working with a variety in a variety of sort of different industries, different finance roles, and then moving into business operations as well. Um, I joined Float around three and a half years ago or so. Um, Float, if you haven't heard of us, um, we're a cash management and forecasting tool that integrates with Zero. We provide real-time information, helping business owners make more informed decisions. Okay, so let's, um, let's get started. My top five tips. So just a quick run through of what I'm going to cover um, this morning. First of all, get to know your ins and outs. Um, I feel like there's a hokey cokey joke in there, but I'm, I'm probably not going to go there. Um, secondly, maximize your visibility. Um, if I had to pick one of the five tips, this would be my top tip, as I think the rest of them all actually come back and um, center on this one. Um, next, we'll then look at getting on top of any cash gaps. 
then we'll dive deeper with some what if questions. And lastly, I'll talk about making sure that everybody's on the same page. Okay, so let's get started getting to know your ins and outs. So this is actually, I think this is good advice for businesses as well as um, personally. Um, every so often I'll do a review of my own personal account and be reminded of subscriptions that I'm just not using anymore or that I'd signed up as a free trial and it's converted to paying and I just didn't realize. And I think the same thing happens in businesses as well, particularly when you have multiple people in the team that are signing up for things. Um, you should also think about um, where you might be paying for more than you need. Perhaps you've got empty seats and subscriptions or where discounts are available for signing up to an annual plan. Remember to look at all of your bank accounts as well. Look at credit cards, other payment cards, because lots can actually be hiding in there. Um, so just an example in Float, Float can show you all the transactions that you're going through all of your cash accounts in zero, And you can also drill into the detail of any invoices and payments as well. Um, I remember a little while back, I was um, helping a CEO that I know to get set up in Float. And it felt like it was the first time he'd really had that visibility of what he was actually spending his money on. Um, and he came back to me a little while later and told me about all the savings he'd made by cancelling and updating regular payments. So it's definitely worth spending a little bit of time to see what's in there. Okay, um, next up, I'm going to talk about maximising your visibility. So yeah, it's important to plan for both the short term and the longer term because these are going to guide different types of decisions. So short term visibility is going to really help you consider those immediate decisions that you have, such as making the next payment run or when you might need to chase some customers for payments. Longer term visibility, though, will help you make those more strategic decisions for your business. Invoices and bills are only going to let you see a month or two ahead. And remember, they won't include other costs such as payroll or VAT payments as well. I think that's why it's important to build that cash flow forecast to allow you to maximise your visibility in the short term and the longer term as well. So just a little example in Float, you can build a cash flow forecast that allows you to see up to three years ahead. And that provides you both that short term and the longer term visibility that I've just mentioned that you need to be able to run your business. We pull in invoices and bills from zero, but as I just mentioned, that isn't enough. So you can also add in expectations of other cash movements and forecast further ahead, creating a visual representation of your cash flow. Okay, next up, now that we've got that visibility, I'm going to talk a little bit about getting on top of those cash gaps. So cash gaps become really clear once you have that cash flow forecast in place. You can see where your outgoings are going to be higher than your incomings and where this might cause temporary or more permanent gaps in your cash balance. By having that visibility, it allows you to take action before you reach them. And in some cases, the actions that you're able to take will only be available to you if you can plan ahead. So the action you take will depend on also whether the gaps are temporary or not. I've put a few examples in the slides here. For example, you might want to delay any planned increases in costs, for example, hiring new people or a new project that you might want to kick off. And it doesn't have to be the case that you're going to cancel those altogether. But sometimes it might just be enough to delay for a few weeks or months to help you get past a temporary dip in your cash reserves. Another might be to negotiate longer payment terms with suppliers. These could just be temporary for a few invoices to help tide you over, or perhaps a more permanent shift in, pay in payment terms. In either case, it's always better to speak to your suppliers first. You'll know from your own experience of chasing customers that you'd rather have upfront awareness if your customer's unable to pay, and perhaps you can help with a payment plan. And perhaps if you're buying in stock, maybe you can ask your supplier if they can hold consignment stock and only pay for what you use and when you use it. The other side of this is reviewing your credit control process, and Sonia has done an excellent job of that, so I'm not even going to add anything to there. So thanks so much, Sonia. Um, but obviously an incredibly important part of them um, getting on top of your cash gaps too. And the last one I've put on here is really aimed at those more permanent cash gaps, overdrafts, loans, or other types of external funding. In order to have the best options available to you here, you really need to be planning in advance. Lenders are gonna be much happier to lend to businesses that have the awareness that they'll need funds in six months time compared to getting a call to say that they need those funds next week. Okay, let's move on and we can get on to answering some what if questions. So as business owners, you'll be asking yourself lots of questions every day and almost all of them will have some kind of impact on your cash. Once you have a cash flow forecast, you can start to ask yourself some of those what if questions. For example, what if I want to hire more staff? 
What if I want to increase production capacity? What if I want to open a new shop? And in recent years, I know many businesses have been asking much more difficult questions as well. What if my sales reduced by 20%, 50% or more? Have a think about what the questions you're asking yourself are at the moment. Modeling the impact of these questions will give you the confidence to make your decisions. In Float, you can build out your what if questions using scenarios. Here you can start to build out an alternative view of your cash flow, giving you the visibility of the impact on your cash. So in this example here, this is looking at bringing on a new sales hire. We can still see our original forecast in the darker blue, but we can also now see this new sales hire uh, scenario in turquoise. We can see that in the short term, for the first few months, the cash balance with a new sales hire is going to be lower than what it would have been because you've got all the extra salary costs and things in there. But once that team member is trained up and starts selling, you can see that the cash balance overtakes your original forecast that was there without the hire. Sometimes making that decision in the moment is difficult, particularly when you know that impact on the short term cash. But when you can see the potential in the more medium term, it can really give you that confidence to go for it. Okay, we're nearly there for my top tips. Last one is making sure that everyone is on the same page. So people in your businesses are making decisions every single day that impact cash. Whether that's the salesperson agreeing longer payment terms, the marketing person signing up to a new agency, or the accounts person making supplier payments, and actually everybody else in between. It therefore doesn't make sense that only one person is building out the cash flow forecast as they don't have all of the context that everybody else has and it also leaves frustrations to build when decisions are being made that are detrimental to the business's cash flow. I found in my experience it really helps when I've involved everyone in the team when I'm building my cash flow forecast and then critically also involve them when I'm reviewing and updating it as well. I found that this can really help with the accuracy of your cash flow forecast as well as creating shared accountability across the team. OK, almost ready to hand over to Expend. I just want to mention that you can also get access to an exclusive six week extended trial at Float. Um, head to the website to sign up and let us know that you heard about us on the webinar. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know if you've got any questions at all. Um, thanks so much. I'm now going to hopefully seamlessly pass you over to Sanjay at Expend to take you through his top tips. Thanks so much. Hello, everybody. Give me one sec while I um, while I get this set up. So we are going to go to there. I'm going to share our screen. So you should be able to see my oh, should be able to see my screen now. There we go. Lovely. <laughs> So, hello and good morning. As mentioned, I'm Sanjay. Um, I'm head of sales at Expend. I manage the full sales cycle at Expend. So, we work with a wide variety of customers, uh, small one man bands, all the way up to our multinational brands. I'm always mindful when sort of going third in a webinar. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with something a little bit different. I've got into mindfulness. Uh, during the lockdown. So we're going to take a few seconds. And what I'm going to encourage everyone to do, you don't have to if you don't want to, is we're going to close our eyes, take one big deep breath, exhale, big stretch, and then we're going to crack on with my presentation. So um, let me change the screen. So before jumping into cash flow, it probably makes a bit of sense to give you a bit of a background about expend. So we're an all-in-one expense management platform. We cover everything from out-of-pocket expense claims to mileage claims. We even have our own smart MasterCard, which automatically syncs transaction information to the accounting software of your choice. We even allow you to spend on company cards and scan in invoices and receipts. We like to think of ourselves as an all-in-one expense management platform. As mentioned before, we serve a wide variety of customers from one-man bands to multinational brands that you might recognize that are on screen at the moment. So I'm aware that obviously the vast majority of people on this call are accountants. So I don't really need to preach to you about what cash flow is, but because this is shared amongst you know many many different places, I also know that some businesses would have liked to jump on board. So it's probably worth covering this. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but um, 
as as we know, uh, cash flow is basically the money flowing in and out of of a business. It's the most important thing um, to one extent because essentially poor flash cash flow is uh, one of the main reasons listed for businesses uh, tending to fail. So you know it's really important that we hone in on this subject and 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 understand how we can be helping ourselves. So. What we are going to cover, so our, our sort of five tips that we're going to cover today are defining spending, taking control of spending, transparency and real-time reporting, harnessing the power of technology, and continuous improvement. So, um, so in order to keep your cash flow in check, it's first good to understand what you can and can't spend on. So there's two elements of this as a business. What are you allowed to spend according to the local laws and rules and regulations? And also what's permitted as part of your business, um, business spending. So for example, did you know parking tickets, Spotify subscriptions and dinner with family and friends are not expensable or expendable as we like to say. Um, you know, once you're aware of the things you're allowed to spend on, you can start building up frameworks and an understanding around expense policies and what you're allowed to spend on. We've got our free expend, uh, expense guide. I would recommend that you check that out. And there's some helpful links over there explaining some uh, things that are tax deductible and non-tax deductible. So that's one tip. So really understand and define what your spending is and what you're allowed to spend on. Oh, there we go. And then sort of... The next tip that we're going to look at is taking control of spending. So spend control looks at the level of management and monitoring business has over its outgoings. So in order to get this right, you have to have suitable payment methods to allow the transactions to happen easily. So a few examples that we've listed here are an expense card with customizable limits. So a flexible card where you can create spending policy for each user, which can be updated at any time. You empower your employees to go out, make the purchases that they need, whilst also staying in control um, of their spending. So if you choose to use someone like Expend, the benefits are you get even more control. So you've got the option to block the card, uh, online transactions, contactless transactions, ATM withdrawals. You can even block certain merchant types. So if you're company has a sales team like ours and likes going to all those pubs, bars and restaurants, um, you can just put a blanket rule and block those and um, they won't be able to spend in those. So you're, you're sort of harnessing um, that control back to yourselves. In addition to that, you might look at invoice and expense automation tools. Um, so using tools that automatically pull in invoice and receipt data, making it easy to understand the expenses flowing in and out of your organization. Um, you can use expense to do this and we support any invoice or receipt type. A further one that you might wanna look into is a company credit card. So obviously it's a flexible method of payment. Uh, they're a great option for short-term credit as well with little to no fees. In addition to that, you can even get some that have rewards and special incentives. You know, Who knows, it might even pay for your summer holidays. Uh, not sure how many of us are going on summer holidays given current circumstance, but we can all be hopeful. Um, and then, you know, again, with Expend, we allow you to push in all of that credit card data and reconcile that with an account, accounting platform of your choice. So just something too important to mention, mention. And I know I've put mileage tracking down there. So mileage tracking tends to be forgotten about because something's not explicitly being spent in that moment in time but it's important to not make the mistake that many businesses do and have multiple apps for all these different things when you, know, you can collate all of those together in one place for one low monthly fee. So taking control of spending, that's one element of that. And then the second part of that is around accurate receipt capture. So there's no point having all the spending tools, but then not being able to retrieve the information easily. So we need this to essentially stay compliant with the rules as a HMRC requirement, claim back more VAT. So if you're VAT registered, you've actually got the receipt in the first place. It's not crumpled or lost or covered in tea. Um, and also you're reducing fraud because you've got all these tools in place. 
Um, it's really transparent on what's what you're spending on, how the spending's happening, and you know people can't put suspicious um, suspicious expense claims through. So, just sort of rounding that off to summarise, it's important to control spending so we can create clearer budgets, forecast around our spending. If you're using an automation tool like Expend. We will, do, we will do all the hard work and heavy lifting so that it's not as time consuming, you can reduce the chance of error and fraud, but you're always in better control of your cash flow as well. So our third tip is around gaining control, is around reporting. Again, creating transparency and real-time insights. This allows cash flow and budgets to be planned effectively. Expend syncs with all your accounting providers in real time. So you're making decision based on what's actually happening in your business now, rather than what's happened in the past. Our penultimate tip is around harnessing the power of technology. So running a company in 2022, it is important to focus on the vast tools that are available in order to succeed. As we know, technology goes hand in hand. Um, this is one of the biggest tips, which is around speaking to all the different products and services that are available, essentially using the right product for the right job. In addition to that, speak to your accountants, as many accountants are much more than just accountants. We like to see them as our little tech wizards, um, providing great understanding on products and tools that just essentially make everybody's life easier. And if you are an accountant, do feel free to get in contact with us. We've got a partnership program, which essentially um, we offer special incentives, discounts. We allow you to get part of our webinars and um, also be involved with um, new product releases and feature releases. And then sort of our final tips, so I've, I've borrowed this from our development team. But in order to keep your cash flow in check, it's all about iteration, iteration, and iteration. So like many areas of your business, just because you implement a new tool or a new feature doesn't mean that it stops there. It's important to keep revisiting where you are, how you're doing things, how you can improve on things, and make sure that this is something that's regularly worked on and checked in on. Uh, go attend AccountX, ZeroCon, uh, the Digital Accountancy Show. There's plenty of resources that are available and you know that's an easy way for you to keep in check and understand that as to what's going on you know you could get a cool rubber duck from float a nice uh, pint of beer from chaser or a wonderful cactus from us at expense so there's also incentives that you can get from visiting one of these wonderful trade shows so to summarize and wrap things up in order to keep your cash flow in check it's important to define your spending understand what you are and what you're allowed to spend on and what you're not allowed to spend on. Take control of your spending, have the right tools in place to allow spending to happen efficiently and the receipt data um, to be input easily so you can stay compliant, provide transparency, but also work on your understanding of your cash flow. Transparency and reporting, understand what's happening in your organization in real time. Um, using this reporting from Expend or your accounting platform or one of the other wonderful other wonderful apps that are on this call, using that and using it to your 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 best to your ability, harnessing the power of technology, making sure that you are using the right tools for the job in order to get the results that you require, and you know finally continuous improvement. So really building and developing on how you're doing things and constantly checking in because you know if you decided to sign up to expend today we've done a lot in the last year um compared to you know if you had a chat with us a year ago because we're constantly developing and building on our product and on our brand so i'd encourage you to um have a chat with us uh connect and um learn a little bit more about what we do thanks very much for your time Brilliant. Thanks for that, Sanjay. And thanks to Jen and Sonia as well. That was really, really good and really, really insightful. And thank you, everybody, for uh, putting your comments and questions in as we've um, gone along. Um, I'm just going to um, change over the screen and then we're going to dive into some of these questions 
uh, before we finish today. So uh, first one's up. So first of all, just to confirm, Julie, you asked, are you going to get a copy of the presentation today? Um, I'm not sure if we're sending out an exact PowerPoint. I'll double check, but just to confirm that you will be able to see all of the slides on the recording as well. Um, so you would definitely be able to see them. And I'll check to see if a copy of the slides is going out as well. And if so, that will be in the email follow up that you get along with the recording. So you will get that uh, within there. Uh, we've had a question in uh, from Florian asking, uh, other than Excel, what cash flow forecasting tool? Ideally, uh, that integrated with zero, could you recommend? Um, Jen, you might know of one or two. Do you want to, uh, do you want to take this one? Sure. I mean, Float's pretty good at that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, there are obviously, there's there's lots of forecasting tools out there that you, that you can take a look at. But I think it's really thinking about what it is that you're looking to get out of that. I think, you know, there's other tools that can help you with a sort of more of a sort of three-way forecast if you're looking for profit loss and balance sheet as well. But if it's about cash management and it's actually about sort of really it's, it's all about understanding your cash, then, then Float's great for that and really is, is there to um, yeah focus in on your cash short term and long term. Yeah, that's great. And, and and just sticking with Float actually and Jen, we've mm -hmm. had a question in from Sheila asking, um, do you recommend building a cash flow forecast based on budget information if you don't have the actual information or would you use historical information? Oh, it's a great question. I think um, historical information is usually where we begin when we start to think about budgets. I think that's always kind of what we've done. But I think do you know, the world's been a bit crazy these last few years. Your historical information is probably not a great base for your budget either. So really, where I would actually start is by speaking to other people in the business and help and get them to help you figure out what your budgets are. And then it, once you've started to sort of get other people's um, views on, on that, that you can help to build up a sales budget, a marketing budget and see how all of that comes together as well. So, um, yeah, probably not historical information and more budgets, but speak to people as well. Yeah, no, that's great. Thanks for that, Jen. Um, Sanjay, one for yourself. Um, how do you differ from Plio and Soldo and any other uh, companies that are similar out there? Sure. No, thanks for that. Um, thanks for the question, whoever's put that out. So um, there are some key differences between us and Plio and Soldo. Uh, to begin with, we're UK focused with UK regulation in mind. So everything built from the ground up um, is with that in mind. So there's some subtle differences between um, for example, if you do more than 10,000 miles on an expense account, we automatically drop the rate to 25p amount, uh, 25p after 10,000 miles. A lot of those other providers don't. We give you a dedicated account manager, um, no matter the size of your business. We also um, don't have any complicated pricing plans. We just give you one low monthly fee and we give you access to everything. And a lot of those um, people that you've mentioned don't have the full suite of features that we have. So the mileage, the out of pocket, the ability to use your own card, um, the ability to scan in all your invoices and receipts um, and the ability to email in your invoices and receipts as well. So it's, it's quite different in terms of the functionality set that we have. And as mentioned in the presentation, it's, it's good to future-proof your, your organization. So if you don't necessarily need mileage or out of pocket now, chances are in six months, 12 months, you will. So it's better to be reactive um, rather than having to change after three months or six months. And, and or the other option would be to buy a mileage tracking tool, which is going to cost you probably twice the amount an expense subscription would as well. So um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much uh, some of the key differences. Brilliant. Thanks, Sanjay. Um, and I've got one for, for yourself, Sonia, and it's saying um, we've used the automated uh, sort of um, invoice reminders in our accounting system before, but it felt sort of quite rigid, quite automated, uh, and not very personable. Um, how does Chaser sort of tackle that issue? And, and, and will it feel like that coming from Chaser? Um, it's right, I didn't go into much detail um, about that in, in our presentation. I can understand that's that's actually something that a lot of people worry about when they're using an automated system. They, they're scared of using that kind of humanized approach um, to credit control. Um, so it's it's actually that's what makes Chaser unique and, and um, where our differentiator tends to be is um, that's not the case because with Chaser in particular, you can actually personalized every single email um, so that it looks um, like it's been hand typed by you, uh, the individual. Um, and the email also comes directly from your email address. Um, so not from a chaser email address or an automated email address. 
And um, what makes it easy and what makes it fast is that you can use placeholders um, to personalize each email template such that um, like the first name, the name of the company, invoice number, invoice amount, etc. So it kind of like pulls all that information. And so it looks hyper personalized um, and, and really looks like it, it, it can be hand typed. So, so yeah, I think that that would be my um, my best explanation to that. But uh, good question, and it, it's yeah. true. It's a, a bread and butter, and I don't think I went over it in the in the presentation. Yeah, no, thanks, Anya. And another one for you, actually, that's come from Paul, um, who says they work. Uh, they've got a construction company, and they've got lots and lots of uh, basically just old debts and old debtor book, um, and can sympathise with what you were saying, where you were saying you just send things out, and then eventually you get around to chasing it. Um, if they were to implement this, how quick can they see an impact um, is the question in terms of saying how, how quickly can we get through some of those old debts? That's the million dollar question. Um, well, I think the, the best response is it depends. Um, so it's not, it's not a cookie cutter approach for, for everyone, but um, in we do have a customer who who um, we had one of our customers often experience um, success right at the beginning, which is why we offer that 14 day trial. Um, so really, if you wanted to just come in and test it out, um, you could probably see the value within 14 days and see if it's working for you. Um, and that would actually be kind of you know it wouldn't cost you anything to to do that. Um, but one of our customers actually, um, one of our customers, tax, tax assist, and um, they use Chaser for themselves. And for their own clients, they were able to recover uh, 20,000 pounds of debt um, for one of their customers in just minutes of using Chaser software. And I think we've got a nice video somewhere of them talking about this. Um, and it was, you know, the, 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 you know, the big celebration at our company when we saw that happen. We like, we like to see this sort of thing um, happen. And, and, and at the very end, um, at the last bit for construction companies, um, I know that they struggle a lot with late payments. It's one of the industries that um, tends to struggle the most. Um, so we do also offer, um, you know, that, that, that you know, if, if that person wanted to just, uh, Paul, if you want to just kind of sign up for the free trial and um, we noticed that your um, bad debt is over 90 days or just really accrued um, a lot and, and, and you've got a lot of accumulated, we can just escalate that um, directly to our collections. And um, it's no win, no fee also. So you've got nothing to lose. Um, and, and I would recommend that our credit controllers can help have a look at those things and, and advise you on the best course, in, uh, course of action, I think. Yeah, that's great. And, and just to follow on from that, actually, Sharon, uh, thanks for the lovely message. Um, and she's saying, actually, we've got our clients' old debtors down from 27K to 5K in six weeks with Chaser. So, so yes, there we, we go. Know, That's we it. Sharon, um, Sharon Potmark, that so lovely. Thank you for sharing that. We we absolutely love um, her and her team. Um, yeah. They've been using it for a long time. Thank you. Yeah, no, thanks yeah. for that, Sharon. That's, uh, that's great. Um, and I think... Thanks, uh, hello. <laughs> So I've just got a couple, uh, couple of questions, more questions, um, and these are both centered around projects, actually, um, and they link quite nicely together. So Sanjay, I'm just going to start with yourself in terms of um, running projects. Um, it, we've got quite a lot of clients that run projects um, and basically within Expend, is that something that they can do and manage those sort of receipts and invoices per project? Yes, correct. So if you've got um, a particular client that you need to um relate the particular expense to or particular project or a particular anything really we've got custom tracking groups that the user can set up they've also got the option to split out the transaction again which is not available with a lot of our competitors where for example if you spend i don't know 10 pound on fuel three pounds on a sandwich they can split out that transaction and reflect that um expense within one expense claim and um it's allocated to different projects, even if the expenses relate to different projects as well. So um, you can fully do that in the system. You can track it across. It pushes through to things like Zero and QuickBooks and all of that information pushes through nice and seamlessly without the need to click any CSV buttons, download anything, or export anything. Everything pushes through automatically, seamlessly in real time. Yeah, uh, that's great. And, and, and following on from that as well, just leading over to yourself, Jen, in terms of saying, um, uh, I'm just looking for the question now. I've got a couple more come in. So thank you very much for that. 
Um, but I've just lost where I am. Um, in terms of, yeah, scenario, uh, basically the scenario feature uh, within Float. And um, basically, I want to see how, uh, no, sorry, that's another question that I've got. I'm getting myself mixed up here. Give me a second. Here we go. We do a lot of project work within our business and can sometimes struggle to keep up with what we're spending on what and how it matches up with the income we're receiving. Um, can Float help with that as well? And I think that's a lovely follow on uh, to do with expend as well. Yeah, thank you. That's a great question. Um, yes, as a quick answer, it's possible in float, and it's actually something that we're working on right now. Um, yeah. We hear this from a number of customers. So we've developed um, float projects where you can assign or, or tag up your budgets to different projects, both your income and your expenses. And then you're able to see that sort of overall cash impact of just those particular projects within your forecast as well. Yeah. No, that's great. And I'm just going to do one final one because we are on 12 and we don't want to run over and stop people from getting to their lunch. Um, so, uh, Sonia, it's a question for yourself that's coming from Tanya. And she's just asking, um, how does Chaser work with the individuals uh, compared with corporate companies and you're chasing debts? Is that something that Chaser does? So we we have fewer um, individuals, but yes, um, absolutely. Um, the, the only thing that I would say is um, uh, to make the best use of it, you need to um, um, attach your accounting system to it. Um, so if you're if you're an individual using like let's zero QuickBooks um, or, or whatever accounting system, that's where you'll get the best use of Chaser. Um, I, I um, maybe maybe we can have a chat after um, Tanya, if you'd like, and we can see how we can work specifically for you. Um, but but we do have um, fewer, but we do have individuals who are using our platform. Cool. Thank you very much. And, and on that as well, just to confirm, um, if you the the webinar um, email that you would have got through, and um, if you reply to that with any specific questions and for who they might be as well, and if we've not managed to get through to everybody's, um, then um, make sure you just email that through and I'll make sure it gets to the right place because that comes through to us as well. So if you have got anything specific you want to follow up, then we can make sure you go to the right person. Um, but you can see on the screen now, if you do want to find out more in terms of this is how you can do it, um, the details for Chaser, Expend and Float. And like I say, um, we'll send a follow-up email as well with a copy of the uh, the webinar today and um, some other key information and links and, and, and attachments and so on and so forth. So keep an eye out for that over the next the next sort of 24 48 hours um and aside from that i just want to say thank you for the panel today um it's been really fantastic it's been really good really practical which is what we like and, and something tangible for people to go away from i hope everybody has a good rest of their day and a good lunch thanks everyone thank you Bye.